Hey folks, and welcome to an unusual episode of Sound Decisions here on Passion for Sound. I don't normally talk specifically about gaming with headphones, but on this occasion I've decided to make an exception. Like many of you out there, I was really curious to try out Elden Ring for myself, and so I decided to turn it into a review. Well, not a review so much, but my list of my top five headphones for playing Elden Ring. This takes into account my own personal preferences, but I'll explain along the way the things that I like and don't like about certain headphones. I'm going to start off with my top 5 headphones that I've most enjoyed on Elden Ring, but I'll also add a few special mentions afterwards for some headphones that I also liked that didn't quite make the top 5, and a couple that surprised me for not being so good. To let you know, almost all testing for these headphones was done using the Cord Hugo TT2, although I did also spend some time with the shit Yggdrasil, and that meant I was driving the headphones either directly from the TT2 or sometimes from the Sparkos Labs Ares. Without further delay though, let's go through my top 5. Now I'm ranking these from the bottom to the top, so we'll reach my absolute favourite headphone for Elden Ring at the end of this list, and they're a little bit out of order in terms of price. We're starting with the Hyferman HE400 SE. So this is Hyferman's budget entry-level planar magnetic headphone, and it goes on the list because it really surprised me just how good it was for a budget headphone. At just $149, US this is a great choice in my opinion if you're looking for a headphone to get the most out of Elden Ring with. It didn't do anything particularly special like some of the other headphones I'm going to talk about shortly, but it just did everything really well. It had a balanced tonality, so it gave you a good sense of the detail and some of the great sound design in this game, the strings and the soundtrack, and a reasonable sense of spatial information as well. Like I said, it wasn't a standout overall, but at its price, it absolutely was worth making this list. The next headphone to make the list was the 499 US dollar Apos Caspian. This one really surprised me. I listened to a bunch of other headphones, some of which also had a richer, warmer sound, much like the Caspian. But the Caspian won through for having an excellent balance between that rumble and that presence, but still not losing sight of the mid-range details for things like dialogue, interacting with lifts, generally hearing the score as well. A couple of things I particularly liked about the Caspian was they gave this fantastic, deep, rich rumble when you needed it. And when you start a battle and those menacing cellos and strings come in, they came forward really nicely in the mix from the Caspian and helped to build a sense of tension and emotion in the game. The Caspian's not the strongest in this list for spatial information, but it certainly wasn't a problem at all and I thoroughly enjoyed my time playing with the Caspian. Moving up the list now takes us down in price to the Biodynamic DT900 Pro X for $299 US dollars. These absolutely blew my mind for the quality they delivered at the price of them. They did everything just right in my opinion. A great sense of spatial information, I could hear the world around me and where everything was meant to be placed. The tonality was spot on, so I was hearing rich mid-range, good dialogue, lots of detail on things like the lift mechanisms and other environmental sounds. And then there was also a little bit of crispness in things like the death sounds, the strikes of weapons and shields. Everything was just really, really great in my opinion. They've also got a good sense of bass extension, so there is presence and rumble when you need it, without it being an overly warm, rich sounding headphone. Now I should mention at this point that if you are wanting to know more detail on any of these headphones I'm talking about, there are reviews on the channel for every single one of them. I'll put links down below through to the reviews so you can check out my full discussion on each of these headphones if one of them catches your interest. But for now, what I'm trying to do is just paint a picture of what each one did well. And so just to recap so far, the HE400 SE was solid across the board at a very budget entry price. The Apos Caspian brought a bit more rumble. It was a bit more like playing with a home theater system strapped to your head, but I mean that in a good way. And then the DT900 Pro X was the first headphone that I felt really did everything well. There wasn't anything missing from its presentation. And in fact, it's a tough call for me between the DT900 Pro X and my next contender, which I have just edged out and put just above the DT900, and that's the HD6XX. This is a $240 US dollar headphone, and I'm talking about the Drop X Sennheiser HD6XX, which is essentially the same as an HD650. For me, this headphone was absolutely a revelation on this game. It's not a headphone I reach for often, even though I appreciate it and I enjoy it, it wasn't something I thought was going to be good for Elden Ring. 
and yet what I found was it sounded absolutely fantastic. It doesn't have a great sense of rumble and presence, but you don't need that a huge amount of the time in Elden Ring. Obviously you might miss some of those footsteps of giants being those big rumbling sounds, but for the most part there's not a lot of really deep sub bass needed. Instead, what they're great for is an incredibly good sense of space around you as the character, and excellent detail and clarity on all those environmental sounds, the weapon and combat sounds, all of that was top notch. So the HD6XX shot all the way up to number two in my mix because they were just solid across the board. And that leads us to my number one favourite headphone. This is the one I would put on every single time given the choice when I'm playing Elden Ring. Unsurprisingly, it is a flagship headphone, and on this occasion, it's the Meza Elite. This is $4,000 US dollars worth of headphone, so it's not something I'd recommend going out and buying purely for gaming. But if you're an audiophile looking for a headphone that is going to do justice to your games, particularly something like Elden Ring, as well as your music, the Meza Elite is outstanding. It's got the bass presence for that rumble and that impact when you need it. It's got beautiful mid-range qualities for all those environmental sounds and the score to come through with the strings I've talked about already. And on top of that, it is the best spatial headphone of this bunch. It produces a good sense of space around you, excellent image placing and focus, and so everything just sounds lifelike and tangible in the game. I know it's a lot of headphone for a gaming situation, but as I said, I'd consider this a headphone that you would buy because you love music, and it's a bonus that it happens to work so well for Elden Ring. And so that's my top five, ranging from super budget all the way through to absolute top of the line flagship, but there are a few other headphones that I tried along the way that you might be interested in, you might have seen me review them before, and you're wondering how they fared. I want to make a quick mention of the fact that some of the headphones I tried, like the Harmonic Dyn Zeus and Poseidon, also the Sendy Apollo headphone, some of those just didn't work so well because they're just a bit too rich in the upper bass and the lower mids, and they don't really work well for Elden Ring, even though they're great for music. A few other headphones I tried though was the Viren Ones, which I always enjoy for music. These didn't perform so well on Elden Ring because I felt like they were just a little bit too focused on some of the upper end detail, and they got a bit too bright and a bit too edgy sometimes. They were great if you want to focus in on things like dialogue, but overall they're not a great choice on Elden Ring. The Sundara, which is often compared to the Viren One, was in my opinion a better choice for Elden Ring. I tend to lean towards the Viren One for music, but the Sundara was better balanced across the board in this gaming context, and I actually felt like it was very similar to the HD6XX, but not quite as good. And that's why it didn't quite make it into the top 5, but it's a really solid option. A couple of other headphones I happen to have here at the moment, and these I haven't reviewed yet, the review is coming very soon. And those are the ZMF or ZMF Verite Open and Verite Closed. So I should mention, make sure you hit subscribe if you want to see my review and comparison of the Verite Open and Closed. It's coming down the pipeline soon-ish, so make sure you don't miss out. Starting with the Verite Closed, this was the only close back I tried for this roundup, and it was a really solid option, because the Verite Closed produces an excellent sense of space despite being a close back headphone. It does tend to focus you in a bit more on the mid-range and the warmth in the soundtrack, but it does it in a really good way. The Verite Close doesn't quite make it into my recommended list of headphones, but if you have one and you need to use Closeback while you're playing Elden Ring, it's definitely a good option. And by the way, when I was testing the Verite Closed, it was with the stock pads, which are the Universe Solid Pads. Moving on to the Verite Open, it was also excellent, and this was using the Universe Perforated Pads. The sense of space and detail from the Verite Open is absolutely excellent. The only thing that stopped them from making the list was the fact that I didn't feel like for the money they were that much better than some of the other headphones for Elden Ring. I'm not talking about in the context of music, I'm purely talking about for the game. But coming back to the Verite Opens, what I loved about them was as I said that sense of space and detail. They did occasionally get just a little bit sharp and a little bit edgy on things like the weapon sounds and death sounds. But when you hear things like the lifts operating, it's absolutely magic the level of detail and realism they bring out from the sound design. And that leads me to two other headphones, they both happen to be hi-fi men. The first is the Aria Stealth Magnet version, and this was solid. It didn't make it into my top 5 because it didn't do anything really special. There were other headphones that to me engaged me more in the sound. There were other headphones on that list that engaged me more in the game. 
but the Aria was technically really strong and did a great job across the board. The thing that held it back for me from making it into the top five was it was just a bit polite on everything. There was no standout strong point of its delivery, but there were no flaws either. Finally, the headphone that might shock you that it's not in my top five, given where the Elite sits, is the Hi-Fi and Susvara. Despite being one of the very best headphones on the planet, it's not a great choice for Elden Ring in my opinion. And that's because for me, the way the Susvara delivers sound lacks the depth and body that I feel like is needed with a headphone like that to balance the upper mids and treble in the sound design for Elden Ring. You either need a headphone that's got a richness and a smoothness in the mid range, like the HD6XX, the DT900 Pro X, or even the Apple's Caspian, or you need something that's really balanced across the board with a bit of extra bass at the bottom. And that's where the Susvara didn't do it for me. This isn't a knock against the Sasvara for music listening and particularly classical listening, it's absolutely astounding. But for Elden Ring, it's not the choice I'd make and that's probably not gonna to concern too many people with its 6,000 US dollar price tag. Now admittedly, paired up with the right amp, I use it often with the Elekit TU8200, that can bring it a bit closer to what would have fitted in my top five, but it didn't make it to the top five, partly because of its need for a specific sounding amp and partly because of its price tag. And so hopefully if you're in the market for a new headphone, probably for music and a bit of gaming on a game like Elden Ring, then hopefully I've given you five headphones to choose from. Just to recap in the order of my top five, they were the Hi-Fi HE400SE, the Apple's Caspian, the Bayer Dynamic DT900 Pro X, the Drop X Sennheiser HT6XX, and the Meza Elite. There are no doubt plenty of other great headphones that I haven't tried there, so leave your comments down below with any headphones that you think somebody else might want to check out, or me if I happen to have them. But for now, let me leave you to the music, or in this case, maybe it's leave you to Elden Ring. Happy listening or happy gaming, and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.